Let's look at finding square roots. A square root is the number that could be multiplied by itself to get that number which is sitting here underneath the square root. So let's think about it that way and see if we can't come up with some of these. First of all, when there's no sign out front of the square root, we assume that we just want the positive one. And then you also might notice that we have somewhere there's a negative out front. And if that's the case, we want the negative number that, when squared, would get us that thing that's under the square root. So let's take a look at this one. So we want to think about, OK, what number, if I multiply it by itself, is going to get me 25? Well, 5. 5 times itself would get me 25. Because we go 5 times 5, that's 25. 5 squared, of course. And so thus, the square root of 25 is 5. All right, then, let's take a look at this negative square root of 100. All right, so again, what number, when we multiply it by itself, gives us 100? Well, that would be 10. 10 times 10 gives us 100. Okay, so the square root here is going to be negative 10 because also, remember, negative 10 times negative 10 is 100. So we're in this case, we want that negative 1, so we have negative 10. All right, then we've got some fraction stuff here. Similar situation. We think about what fraction, if we multiply it by itself, is going to give us this fraction. Well, the only thing when we multiply it by itself that gets us 1 is 1. So we know the top number of the fraction has got to be 1. And I'm going to write it out like two fractions here just to make this really clear. Then I think about 36. What times itself gets me 36? Well, that would be 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So if we did that, we would get this 1 36th. So the square root of 1 36th is 1 6th. All right, then let's take a look at this one. We have 64 over 121. All right, again, I'm looking for a fraction that top and bottom number there, the numerator being 64, what multiplied by itself gets me 64? Well, 8 times 8 gets me 64, so that's going to be my top number. Then on the bottom, 121, a little bigger one there, but 11 times 11 would get me the 121. So here, my square root's going to be 8 over 11. Okay, now before we move on to some of these others, I want to show you something else. When we're looking at square roots, where that square thing comes from, the idea, if we look at it in terms of an, a square, the shape, and we have a side length for that square, remember all the side lengths are going to be the same, so let's say that our side lengths of our square are 7. Well, if the other side is going to be 7 as well, since it's a square, and the area of that square is going to be 49, 7 times 7, okay? Length times width, if you want to think of it that way, or side squared. So, square roots, if we have the area of a square, to get the side length, we would take the square root. You often see problems like that, and that's one application of square roots. If you're given the area of a square, you can take the square root to find the side length. Okay, another thing that is good to know in terms of square roots is to be able to estimate the square root without grabbing our calculator or as we work it out on our calculator to have some idea what the answer should be because sometimes it's easy to just type some numbers in a calculator and we kind of assume whatever comes out is the right answer. Well, it's the right answer based on what you typed in, but sometimes we might key it in incorrectly. And if we have some idea what the square root should be, we can eliminate some of those potential errors. So, first thing that's handy if we want to estimate some square roots, and I have to estimate all of these because none of these numbers are perfect squares. So, it would be good to know what the perfect squares are. Let's just list those out here. 
perfect squares. 1 times 1 is 1. Then we got 2 times 2, 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 16, 25, 36, 49, 64. That's 8 times 8. 9 times 9 is 81. 10 times 10 is 100. 11 times 11 is 121, and so on. Those perfect squares, knowing those, can help us to estimate values for other numbers. Let's see how this works. All right, so the square root of 24, well, it's not a perfect square. So I take a look at where does 24 fall here, and I look up here, 24 would fit right in between here, right next to the 25. All right. Well, what's the square root of 25? Square root of 25 is 5. Well, 24 is a little bit less than that, so we can say the square root of 24 must be just a little bit less than 5. So we can maybe estimate that that's about, and we want the negative one, about 4.9, something like that. Since it's really close to 25, and if we grab our calculator and check it, we would find that the square root is, and I'll put up the negative on here again, 4.89 and 8.979 and so on. Okay, it's a nice irrational number there. On and on it goes, but we had a pretty good estimate. We knew before we even grabbed the calculator uh, some idea where this should be. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Here we've got 2. Well, where does 2 fit? 2 fits right in here. Now, square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. So, square root of 2 has got to be between 1 and 2. So, we might estimate, well, it's pretty close to 1. Maybe 1 point, I don't know, 1.3, 1.4 maybe. Okay. And if we grab our calculator and take the square root of 2, what we find is that the square root of 2 is 1.4142 and so on. Okay, so again, hadn't even grabbed my calculator yet, but I had a good idea. So if my calculator gives me some answer completely different, I know, whoo, wait a minute, something must have gone wrong here. All right, then, similar thing we can do with the 14. 14 would fit in right here. Okay, just a little bit less than 16. We know the square root of 16 is 4, so the square root of 14 has got to be a little bit less than 4. Mm, let's say maybe 3 point, uh, we'll take a guess, maybe 3.7, something like that. Okay, again we can grab our calculator, and if we take the square root of 14, what we find is that the square root of 14 is 3.7417, we'll round it to, 3.7417, okay? Again, very close in my estimate. I have a good idea what it will be. All right, last one, number 17, <laughs> number 17, we're looking at 17, and we want the square root. So that fits in just on the other side of 16, right here. Again, it must be between 4 and 5, since those are the perfect squares on either side, but it's pretty close to 16, so it's got to be just a touch over 4, let's say maybe 4.1 or 4.2, and if we grab our calculator again, figure out what that square root is, we find out that it's 4.1231, 1, 2, 3, 1, so we were pretty close, okay? All right, so finding square roots. First of all, we can think about what number multiplied by itself gives me that number I'm interested in the square root of. If there's a negative sitting out front, we want the negative one that will do that for us. Fractions, we think the same way. What two fraction or what fraction can we multiply by itself to get that number that's under our square root? The perfect squares, knowing them, can help us to be able to estimate values of square roots that are not perfect squares before we even grab our calculator and potentially save us from some errors. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.